I am here with Matt Seidel. Matt, thank you for joining me, man. What a treat. Let's do it. Now, before we even started recording, I realized rather quickly we might not talk at all about wrestling. I, I've never even heard of that. <laughs> what is this wrestling There's stuff? No, I mean, I, I mean, I hear it's pretty neat. Yeah, I heard it's cool. Yeah. I mean, kids like it, I hear. There's no doubt. I mean, if I was a kid, I would love it. I mean, I definitely loved it when I was a kid. Luckily, I still do love it. Otherwise, I guess I wouldn't be. Yeah, I wouldn't have flown from Tampa to Seattle today for this. Could you imagine being a kid now with every like with podcasts, with on demand, with YouTube? Uh, I don't think I would have ever left my house. The amount of information, the, the amount of access that people have to wrestling to get a tape of Japanese wrestling was a five time dub over nothing but static running yeah. across the TV. <laughs> and it was you were borrowed your friend who traded the tape. I mean, it was it's it truly is amazing. And, it, and it's a testament to why wrestling is so good now yeah. is because it's all out there everything's on the table mm -hmm. and you know it's hard for some of us who who were around when there was a scarcity to mm -hmm. realize that it's a world of abundance now everyone and, can see everything yeah and you got to play that game now yeah i think about when i was a kid yeah you knew when a good spot was about to happen because that part of the tape was worn out more you're like oh something good's about to happen my buddy must have rewound this part and watched it over and over and over Man, I just got those crazy Japanese death matches. Those was the first tapes I traded. That's all. I love death match wrestling. It's what got me into wrestling. Mm -hmm. Like I would go to the King of the Death Match tournaments. And this stuff was amazing. I was talking earlier about uh, barbed wire exploding ring matches. Yep. I mean, the the type of wrestling I like is man. There's just different types of wrestling has called to me throughout my life, and it's always been more unusual, you know, than the regular person's like standard generic dream of wanting to be a wrestler it just always affected me in a different way and i think mm -hmm. that's why i wrestled that's why i just do this differently than everybody else do you notice your taste evolving though as you've gotten older like things that maybe you weren't a fan of when you were younger now you're like okay i can appreciate this now uh, i mean i just probably i didn't watch it that much and i still like i just do wrestling that's yeah, what i that's do a good point. like yeah. i watch these shows that i'm on and they're incredible mm -hmm. and they blow me away but i don't spend much time i've never spent much time watching wrestling especially other people wrestling mm -hmm. because then you'll just end up more like them and kind of like and music a lot of people the best musicians don't listen to a lot of music i would say it's very similar but mm -hmm. they, they when they do get a chance to see it they know the good from the bad immediately right. and you can see i can see a guy do a drop kick. i mean i think when i worked at wwe when i did my tryout i basically did one drop kick in my tryout match and they just knew mm -hmm. that i just footwork timing spang bang, boom if you can if you have a good drop kick then you probably know how to wrestle like a good drop kick, not one that it doesn't. It's not about how, but a good drop kick from a, from the eyes of another wrestler. You know, that's how you. You know, that's. This might be an overly nerdy question. Then, what constitutes a good drop kick? Can you describe what a good drop kick would be? It's it's precision. Yeah. It's knowing exactly. I was talking about this in my seminar I gave earlier today. It's full body awareness, awareness of where every single square inch of your body is at that exact moment of contact, and having full control and ability. To, to adjust and adapt in midair and just the knowledge, like I was saying how you should, you should be able to wiggle your toes in the middle of all of this. Like you should be so aware of your body that you're not just aware of like the, cause it's a lot of big movements, but there's fine movements in it too. Like whether your hands like this or like this, this is like somebody who's, who's not, who's tense and like they're then somebody whose hands like this in wrestling, it's a cup and it's kind of a, it's a connector piece. And so mm -hmm. if you can just tell there's guys that drop kick the shit out of people, but I'll say that's not a good drop kick. Then there's guys that drop kick the shit out of somebody. And I say, that's a good drop kick. <laughs> it's, I mean, I hate to say it's subjective to my eye, but it's like, right. if you've seen a million drop kicks, <clears throat> you can tell the difference between the guys that like, and those are the guys that reach through the screen and grab the viewers. It's the intangible that we can just recognize. Yeah. The it factor. A lot of times what people would say. Now, before we started, um, obviously, we are going to talk about some wrestling, duh. But, um, man, we were talking about stem cell research. We were talking about old people, rich old people being able to live longer than the rest of us. The, the, the stuff we, were, like, uh, we, we mentioned off the air about, like, Ray Kurzweil. And Do you think he'll ever die? I he's saying that. I, I, my buddy was telling me about this Ray, Ray Kurzweil who made the, the Moog synthesizer. But he's, like, a brilliant scientist. And he is saying... That people will live forever at some point. He didn't just make the Moog synthesizer. He's invented everything. That's the true. flatbed scanner. So he was the first person. This isn't a guy who set out to like be a computer guy. He set out to let blind people read. That's what, pro that's what has promoted his technology. And he's watches technology mm -hmm. grow at that exponential rate. And he makes all these predictions and then goes back and covers them. Which predictions has he been wrong with? The only prediction he's basically been wrong with is the 
advent of self-driving cars coming in. But that's only because it's a mechanical technology combined with a digital. But all things that you predict on a digital level are exponentially growing. And according to his calculations, I mean, he he's going to just download his consciousness into a computer and live forever. I mean, I think it's we're looking at like out. the virtual reality and the augmented reality. At some point, those goggles will be what our world is. And that's crazy, in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, it, it starts with kids getting used to it, and these kids will grow up with augmented reality as a given with Snapchat. Mm-hmm. When kids see Snapchat, they live in a world of augmented reality. I mean, yep. that, that's what they're like. And it's hard for people who didn't, who grew up with a 14.4 modem and like waited for that 28.8. You know, it's it's very hard to relate, but it's really important to it. And this is so, I know we've been talking about Ray Kurzweil, but I also think about this guy named Marshall McLuhan who talks about like the effects of media mm-hmm. and like, uh, you know, they started thinking about the effects of the television when there were only 10 million television sets in the U.S. And all these, the great thinkers of that time thought about the effect of it and what TV does. It, it doesn't just, it's not just something you watch. It, it bathes you in the message. It caresses your body. You, yeah. you, you, you feel it. It's a, it involves you. And it's just like the, the way people saw that happening, that was just when electronic circuitry, like electric connection, started to happen between people. And he thinks that it's an extension of the human central nervous system. So, because it is, because if I hold my cell phone in my hand, I have the answers to everything, essentially. And that's an extension of my central nervous system that is also connected to you. Got you. So, the extension of my central nervous system goes out through that. And then, so, it's the same thing as the way your skin can feel wind blowing on it. Mm -hmm. If you send out, you know, your electric digital central nervous system you can feel the wind blowing anywhere you can feel you know it's it's the same way our clothing's an extension of the skin right type thing well dude i went to uh the consumer electronics show for the first time and a lot of people like hey what was like what are the cool gadgets i'm like look all i got out of that is that robots are taking over and it's scaring me because you like you just said soon and there, there there will be chips that can be put in us that can do everything that our cell phone does so all of a sudden now we don't have the cell phone in our hands anymore. Now we have the chip in our brain. And like you said, we can interact that way. And I think about just the robots and they're saying within 2025, robots will be able to take a high school exam and not have to and, and, and react and have emotions in ways that we have. Yeah. And we're just letting it happen. <laughs> it scares me, man. It, it, man, it scares me. Did you see the documentary <laughs> about how the AI computer won at the Chinese game of Go? It's called AlphaGo. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. They taught an AI. These people who don't even really comprehend how to play this Chinese game of Go, where it's considered you have to have human intuition to play it because it's not about the number of permutations because on a chessboard, there's only a certain number of movements. Right, right. But this has so many options that you couldn't run a computer program. You just have to teach, like... They taught it to play against itself, and it made a bunch of crazy creative moves. And this was 2016, and it mopped the floor with the best Go player of all time. And essentially, they're making moves that humans would never think to make but end up being more effective Mm -hmm. or efficient. And so you mean to tell me that there's a single problem today that we should be putting human minds to solve? We should be putting human minds to computer minds to solve these problems. It's a matter of what problems are we trying to solve and which ones are we looking at? Are we, are we seeing that we have an abundance of resources and we're looking at making sure everybody has water in a toilet and, and basically the ability to self-sustain? Right. You know, or are we like, we need more money, so we need to build something to figure out a way to make more money? That'll be, well, that's sort of the military-industrial complex, and that creates a bunch of bombs and kills a bunch of people that we don't know and, and really <laughs> causes for you know, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of hardship that we just kind of choose to ignore. But, but we're letting happen. Right, but because of our central nervous system now extends even there, we can't pretend that these people aren't people. We can't pretend that they don't have the same rights as us, regardless of where they're born or where they're from or what language they speak or who they are. Like, you sort of, in this digital age, have to recognize every single person as a sovereign person and so, I mean, hopefully uh, this kind of stuff can lead to the positive effects where people aren't as anonymous so that you can just blow them up and get away with it. That's a good point. I never thought about it that way. But dude, one of the weirdest parts is when you walk into one room, it's like all robotics, right? And then it has this giant robot up and it says, don't worry, we're always going to need you. And I'm like, oh, they're just, they're messing with us right now. Well, I mean, like the next, like <laughs> the, the next terrorist attack or something could be, uh, will of course be cyber. Why would anything, mm-hmm. nothing's going from the digital world uh, in, into the real mm-hmm. world. Everything's going digital currency. But, uh, yeah. but these attacks like where, you know, Israel, like uh, when Iran's trying to make a nuclear power plant, they're trying to spin up their generators, but the Israelis just hacked 
the computer so that instead of hitting the off valve when they when the generator sped up, they just sped up and overheated every time because they can hack the mm. HVAC system. So you can use the computer network, you can use this digital nervous system to do all sorts of things, including nefarious things like like get into a building's heating and air conditioning system right. and and do things that have effects in the real world. And so you can literally do real world harm from a computer in a cafe in Bogota. Yeah, cyber terrorism in any way that you want. And and because of the 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 internet really is not is extremely in, unsecure right now. Mm -hmm. And it, like there's gonna be Every politician is going to pay the price. I, I like to think. I like to hope. Uh, you know, that's, it's a very good point. So, um, um, so then we were talking about, I know people were like, hey, this is awesome. I'm going to hear Matt's insight on wrestling. And here we are talking about it's cyber all, terrorism. It's all parallel. Like, Beforehand, we were also talking about the injuries that you've been, I mean, you've been wrestling forever. And, and obviously it takes a toll on the man's body. Um, and, you've, uh, and you've mentioned that you were looking into stem cell research and... Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on with that? Because I, I, I hear the words, but I don't understand what's going on with stem cells. Sure. Well, I'm going to be honest. I don't know. This, uh, this interview has been going on for a while. I've been looking over that way and my neck really hurts, especially on like, I kind of have to just balance it out. Do, do you want me to switch sides? No, I'm going to switch sides. I'm, 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 I'm like, I'm dying. Like, yeah, actually, let's do that. Let's switch let's sides. Because my neck's hurting too, looking at you from that okay. way. Okay. But like, mine's like really bad. I'm okay. dying here. Oh, uh, yes. you know, but oh, look at this. Wow, look it's like a whole new interview. <laughs> Get my good side yeah. time. Uh, now you look great. Okay. I was so concerned previously. Um, yeah, man, I got some, uh, uh, you know, I'm doing, I guess I'm doing some research into it. Mm -hmm. I've had a family member get stem cells done, but they were the ones that happened in the U S which kind of to my research has behind, they're behind in the technology because there's better versions of stem cells that you can do with IVs and site specific. Like they use the umbilical cord cells called meso, I don't know. Wow. I don't know what it's called because I'm still in the early phases of the mm -hmm. research. All I know is it's like 25 grand if you want to get it done, but it it's it's what Ray Kurzweil is going to do because he's he has the means to he can keep his body alive for a long time. I think uh, the number one place where this uh, exponential growth of technology will yield insane benefits is the biomedicine, and we're, we're this this UV stem cells are just going to keep people younger and younger and live longer and longer and. I, I don't think it's insane to think I'd live to 120. I mean, right. I've been saying that for a little while. When I was 30, I said, oh, it's just a quarter life crisis. You know, no mm -hmm. big deal or whatever. Like, <laughs> you know, don't worry about it. It's okay. We got a long time to go because medicine advances. And I, I mean, I've got a real, I've got a horrible shoulder and a horrible foot and, you know, I'll take some rest, but they'll, they'll always be uh, keeping me from where, where I'd like to be. But I think that there's possibilities with stem cells to get to uh, more elevated to my to 100%. Like right now, if my shoulder's at 100%, it's still at 75. Gotcha. If my foot's at 100%, it's still at 75 because there's just a huge, what looks like a golf ball sticking out of my foot. It's just... Right, it's not as know. unbearable as it was yesterday. And, so and, yeah. and by the way, the, 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 that's not from wrestling. I don't, I've got hurt like basically once or twice wrestling. Is is I mean, I'm good at wrestling. I don't get hurt, but uh, some people do, but not me, but it, it happens to the best of us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, my shoulder's kind of just gone out, you know, in and it's just kind of done for but i like to think like you know i was just trying to think what am i going to do with myself oh what do you do uh there's these new answers to problems that we were in our when we were kids you couldn't th these were the things of our dreams that we can do now so it's crazy to think something i dreamed about like oh having like somebody inject something and basically get a new shoulder that's what I thought as a kid. I also thought it would be cool to be on one side of the world and be able to video message somebody. And I thought both both those things would cost a million dollars. Right. But they don't. No. They're practically free yep. compared to what they do. The compared to like the the as long as you got Wi Fi, you've got a free way to give a uh, reach somebody. Yeah. And I mean the so the electronic age is the is the solution. Like the technology is the solution because the previous mechanical age that brought us planes and that kind of got got us started also. Got us nuclear bomb. I mean, we went from mm -hmm. nobody even flew in a plane in 1900, and in 1950 we drop an atomic weapon right. on some people we've never met. Mm -hmm. Like it's insane. And and not only we bombed Tokyo itself with fire bombs, the may as well have been a nuclear bomb. I mean, the things we do to each other through these means. However, nobody should have to suffer anymore because all that suffering has led to this opportunity of like. Free, clean energy for everybody, the ability to communicate for everybody, the ability to like uh, live a, a 
high quality of life is there, but people have to set their goals there and focus them in on that, not be thinking about this small, stupid little red team, blue team, my guy, you're like yeah. the, 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 the perspective from which we approach problems has to cha- has to be as modern as the solutions are. And so thinking of like, uh, thinking of giant change like that and like believing in it is not crazy anymore. It's literally what's going to happen. And it's kind of happening whether we want it to or not with us, with the technology accelerating out of our hands. And that's just what it does. It just accelerates mm-hmm. right out from underneath us. Like I think about what, what is wrestling going to be in five years? And I think about when I do motion capture for the video game, and I think about how they'll be able to do it where you as the person will be playing against me as the wrestler, and you'll be able to do a full-on, like, you'll just be able to be there. You and can then, feel it. Yeah, you and can... then you'll also be able to, let's say you want to go back to Wembley Stadium and watch, like, Bret Hart and Bulldog. You can, like, you'll just sit down and be there. They'll Gosh. build the whole thing. And it won't be a, an out-of-reach technology where you need no. a theater or stadium. It'll happen right here in front of you like that um, magic, uh, magic leap. You know, they have, like, essentially pro- yep. projected 3D holograms at a high mm-hmm. level that, that will, will be augmented reality that's movable. And then, so, but that will be, it won't be augmented. It's, it's just reality because it exists there. It doesn't, who's to say it doesn't exist? It does exist, especially if we both look at it through the same lens, then we're both going to see the dancing sloth right here. And then somebody else can walk in here and they'll see the dancing sloth too because we'll all be connected. We'll, we'll all be on the same wavelength. Mm-hmm. Just we got to make sure this is the good wavelength, not the right. You know, it's the one that plays with the dancing sloth, not the one that's like, uh, stay away from me. I, I don't know you, so let's, you know, break out the guns and be afraid of people, you know? Right. It connects people in a way that they don't have to be as afraid because it's also certain parts of electronic stuff aren't as, you know, it's not in person. So it's, kind of a safe way to, to venture out to find the safe routes to find the good people. So you could be in a town with 500 assholes and everybody's an idiot and everybody thinks you got to drink and smoke cigarettes to be cool and chew dip or something. And you're just like, wait, I don't get it. Like, I'll do it, but I don't get it. Then you can get online and find a safe channel. Find a bunch world. of people, yeah. right? And then who, you know, resonate at the same frequency as you. And all of a sudden you're not alone, even though you're sitting in a town with 500 people and you're the one. You're not alone. You're blowing you know? my mind on Pe- this. People, this don't, people don't have to be alone. And, you know, yeah. It's a big difference. But, it, you know, it's still not easy. <laughs> no, and there's always still the risk of it being used improperly, of course. But that's just, dude, you're blue, that, that's blowing my mind. And so, but it's true. I think about, like, I go to, a, I, I go to a flotation tanks and I do the isolation chambers. And, and it always, there was one time where I had it and I, felt, I realized at one moment it was just my brain. It's kind of, I know it's weird probably to some people listening, but I felt, because, you know, you don't have any sensation. You're, the water is your body temperature. It's completely black. And all of a sudden I'm existing where I feel like I'm just this brain in space. And I can do whatever I want in that situation, whatever my brain wants me to go. And it's like, a, you know, maybe it's because I've done my share of hallucinogenics in time and I tap into that. But there's something really surreal about that. Then you incorporate technology where those thoughts can be something where you can feel it and see it. And, and it's not just a, a, a visual a vision in your head. That's when I, I think, wow, that could be a whole new world for all of us. And that's when I think about like the Ray Kurzweil's and it's like, okay, we can live to 200. We might not be living like we're living right now, but we're living with chips and wires or whatever it may be, but we're still experiencing a life sensation. Dude, I read Ray Kurzweil's book called How to Create a Mind. Mm-hmm. And they understand how human neurons work. Mm-hmm. They f- that's how the brain works. The neurons operate the brain. They figured out how neurons work and and... It, they figured out how neurons work after we figured out how to make computers work, right? Mm-hmm. After Ray Kurzweil figured out how to make that flat bed, bed scanner, how to program a computer to read those lines. Well, the, they turns out neurons and the way computers operate are, are basically the same thing. And then they've used that knowledge of the human neuron to then make the the what are you the artificial intelligence mm-hmm. is based off of a human neuron it operates in the right. exact same way except the pathways aren't locked down by getting brainwashed from you or a kid or whatever the pathways are open to connect with anywhere and the same thing what our brain can do is it can do all the processes simultaneously and the computers still have to do them linearly but we're gro- we're s- reducing the size of it so we'll eventually be able to have the size you know the power of a human brain and little chip boy and it, that's just the neurons work like like I like I have this mysticism about me and all this stuff, but there is a way to create a mind. And the way the mind deals with things like creativity, the way 
according to Ray Kurzweil, is it uses metaphors to create new things. And that's like the way where humor comes from and creativity. And it was like, whoa, that's a very closed box theory. I, I mean, I really like it, but I still leave a little bit of room for the woo-woo because mm -hmm. I'm most certain that we don't have the scientific tools to measure things because he's looking at it through a specific lens of like the modern Western science approach. Of it, you know, and there, there's just different lenses to to read. And then, you know, you eventually they'll find a metric to measure the electricity between people or, but, but, you know, the, the, what we refer to as energy or whatever it is. It's, it's not BS. It just, we don't have the tools to make the metrics yet. Eventually somebody will, science is pretty good. Like they'll figure out how to navigate. And, you know, they refer to it as hyperspace. It's kind of where you're talking about in the mm -hmm. flotation tank or psychedelic trips or dream world. Like, who's to say any of that's real or fake? Like it just is what it is. It's like, it just is what it is. And when you do something like uh, trip to those other places or dream to those other places, you have full on memory of, of it as if, you know, you're not delirious, you know, you're somewhere else, you, mm -hmm. but you know where you are and you know, you're there and you, you can operate in that right. as so a version of yourself or a dissolve. And, and it's, uh, you know, to, to me, that's, that's a valid experience. Mm -hmm. And just because we can't measure it, we don't have a tool to measure it. Doesn't mean that that's not valid. Right. It's crazy, man. <laughs> so we did talk about drop kicks, and then we talked about all this. I feel like that's a very uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I got, a spin, I got a spin kick. I look like a pro. When somebody sees me hit that spin kick, they're like, "This kid's been doing it. He's doing it." You know. Really. <laughs> it's like someone comes here, like, "Oh, that!" And I'm hearing about the perfect drop kick. This is awesome. And then we just went out there, and I love they, it though. They, this has been one of my favorite conversations because of that. You know, and I'm I really don't want to set the seed too far in advance, but I'm working on a Zen and the art of pro wrestling. Wrestling, but just my takes on wrestling and mm -hmm. life combined like it's amazing how many things when you start looking like rather than looking directly at a thing to get the ideas about it if you're looking if you're doing stuff outside of it you can like get non-linear connections mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to go from a to b to c to d you can go off to one two three then back to abc and uh I think by getting into other things, it makes me way better at wrestling. And then, mm -hmm. then when I'm out here teaching people how to wrestle, I'm thinking, well, I wish somebody had told me. Like, well, yeah. I, and I'm just coming to these conclusions. Like we're talking now. I don't. Have, this is not a speech. I don't have anything worked up. This right. is just like this is kind of just what I think. Uh, I believe in what I say. I don't think I'm right though. You know what I mean? Right. But I believe right. in what I say. And uh, <laughs> you know, I. Before we before we go, I do want to I have to, I want to ask a quick about to question. say some off camera. <laughs> okay, <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, just to give you a quick, this is a, a selfish question or a selfish moment uh, for me. I just said I'm 43, and last year I decided uh, I'm not getting any old, younger, and I started taking wrestling classes and training and going through it all. And it's been one of the greatest experiences of my life, and go several times a week. I don't know what the plans are for me with it, other than it's a life experience, and I and I've I've been. I just love the, the, the experience that I've had so far. I'd like to go back in time for when you first started wrestling. Do you remember that first day when you decided to, I'm going to become a wrestler, I'm going to get in a ring. What was that experience like for you? Well, I mean, like, I, I've got, I've got like 8 billion stories about, like, I mean, first of all, I, was, I just built a ring in my backyard. But what, mm -hmm. like, the, the thing I liked you said is just, you got the experience yourself. And for me, I love wrestling, mm -hmm. but what I love to do is to get out there and do it, to, like, play it, play with it, to, t like, yeah. You know, because then I'm not giving it my attention away. I'm like, it's, and it, that's what the approach I think people should take to wrestling is just do it yourself. Like, mm -hmm. do it your own way. Do what works. Like, you see, like, there's a bunch of guys in WWE right now that just back at wrestlers that did it their own way. And, yep. like, we all, like, that, that's kind of the generation I came from. And, like, we believed in, do like, that, that don't try it at home stuff is the worst thing you could ever tell people. Don't try this. Don't do it. No, do it right. Go explore it. Go find out. Go learn what it's about. The more you do it, the closer you can relate to it. But like, I'll 100%, tell you, 100% agree. I, I, I had this experience, man, I back at wrestled. I wanted to wrestle. Like I just, my dream was to be the job. I went to an indie show. My dream was to be the jobber in the three way just once to be in a ring. Right. That's how like incredible I thought it would have been. Like how big of a leap it would have been for me to be in a wrestling ring. Uh, and I'll never forget this one day driving home from training. It was like kind of in the not so great part of town. And I was driving back, pull, accelerating in my 88 Toyota Camry station wagon, the silver bullet there accelerating onto the highway and like that doobie gray song some classic rock songs just blasting windows down and man that I, it was the most euphoria i had ever felt in my life like it was the most free i had ever felt like it was like it that, that was just like i mean i get goosebumps just thinking about it 
because everything just not, like it was one of the first time like since you become a kid and then you become a teenager and shit gets hard and it's challenging and man like you you kind of forget what it feels like to feel good and then boy man i accelerated on that highway and whew, it felt good yeah. and i mean that's the feeling i had when i finished that time my time in peru mm -hmm. like i felt back to those moments like where where you got back to where just like you didn't even know what you couldn't even ana analyze that you're happy you were just pure happiness and it was due to, i mean it came through me like that and like I think I've been chasing that ever since. Like, that's it. Like, it's that that moment right there was why I knew. Like, that was after getting banged around, smashed around, hard practice. Like, getting the shit kicked out of me. I mean, I was barely 120 pounds. What do you think they did to me? This is back, like, I'm training under Big Bad Ben and a bunch right. of guys that, like, whoop, just whooped me. And, man, nothing. It felt so good to fly on that highway and just the wind blowing. Like, and it wasn't even, like, it was how I felt after it. Yeah. Like, it was just... Man, it was just the mindset it put me in, whatever brain state that put me in. I was like, okay, well, let's go get that again. And I mean, then in my one of my first matches, I had an out of body experience. Now, just you know, we we we'll, <laughs> we will anyway, have to have I another. I have to specifically yeah. say my uh, Instagram is at m a t t s y d a l at uh -huh. Matt Seidel on Instagram. I'd appreciate it if people could follow along. I sometimes say this crazy stuff, but the more support I get for it, the more of it I'll dish out. You know, I I, I tend to. T take take it easy on these kind of things but i do like to express myself and if people want to follow along i'm also on that twitter it's at find evan f-i-n-d-e-v-a-n uh yeah i mean because yeah. this the only reason yeah, i'm pro wrestling talking tees, here is with your t-shirt like, yeah. buy your shirts do all that fun stuff yeah come out to a show go, yes go wrestle your friend in your backyard right now mm -hmm. Draw, try this off, at home turn off your phone <laughs> stop watching it put on put your phones on and just beat the crap out of each other at home just have fun yep. just have fun with it have fun with pro wrestling Matt Seidel, everybody. Oh, peace, love, and pro wrestling.